Hello, and <laughs> welcome to the Psych Diaries. channel my name is Ro I'm a psychologist from Sydney Australia and usually on my channel I talk about being a psychologist and graduate life and what it's like after graduation but I've had so many questions about uni and study today's video is gonna be all about pretty much every single tip I have for you guys on study note-taking how to prepare for exams even up to mindset and how to prepare on the day of the exam as well as general organization tips general approaches to uni and school I pretty much sat down for like an hour and I just wrote down every single possible tip that I could think of now while I'm not a current student I did spend four years doing my psychology undergrad and honors as well as two years doing my master's which is a postgraduate program as well as obviously doing high school as well and so I feel like I've got enough study under my belt to be able to talk a bit about study skills the study tips that I have and the way that I approach study wasn't necessarily the things that I had been taught growing up or the things that my friends were doing but I really think there were things that made my study experience so much more efficient and so I'm really going to to talk about how I was able to work smart as opposed to just working hard. I'm also a big supporter and especially now that I'm a psychologist of balance and that includes in study. It doesn't matter how important study is, if you burn yourself out, you're losing sleep, you're losing connection with friends and family, you're not doing the things that you love doing, there is really no point in getting really good grades. Alrighty, well without further ado, let's hop into it. Okay, so first part is what to do when you're at uni or you're in class and you're taking notes or listening to your teacher. I remember in uni especially, I would look around and I'd see a lot of people on Facebook or they'd be playing like that exploding game, I forgot what it was called, <laughs> and they would sit there for the entire hour not listening at all and then they'd have to go and catch up in their own time. In my point of view, that was the silliest way to approach uni, which was basically just to rock up, not do anything, and then wait until the end of the term to start studying and start freaking out. Because if you're going to waste your time and sit in a lecture, travel all the way to uni, like use that time efficiently. If you're not going to do anything productive at uni, then to be honest, like you'd rather just skip uni, like go to the beach, go enjoy, go do something fun. There's really no need to go sit in a lecture hall and go on Facebook for an entire hour. My biggest tip really is when you're in a lecture, when you're in class and the expert is telling you information, do your very best to absorb it then. And so I would take my lecture notes during the class hour and then I wouldn't actually do anything after uni. Most nights at uni, unless I had an actual assessment that I was working on that I needed to hand in or I was actively studying for a test, I actually never did homework or catch up or review. And so for most of the semester, I actually did no work as soon as I left uni. When it comes to note taking, it's really important to make sure you have a good base during your lectures because that's going to form what you use during your tests. Early on, I remember I used to just write down everything. It was almost like a written transcript of what the professor would say. And by the time I got, you know, half a term down the track, I had no idea what I had written. It didn't really make sense. It was, there was just so much stuff going on. I got really confused. I learned to be really, really efficient with my note taking. I'd almost like sit back, try and actively absorb what the person was saying, the lecturer was saying, and I'd type really, really concise notes. Now I can probably go on and on about how to take concise notes, but probably the easiest thing is I'm gonna insert a clip now of how I do that in real life. Alrighty, so we're gonna pretend uh, you're in a lecture and I'm going to be reading out an excerpt from the book from The Happiness Trap by Dr. Russ Harris. The statistics are staggering. In any given year, almost 30% of the adult population will suffer from a recognized psychological disorder. The World Health Organization estimates that depression is currently the fourth biggest, costliest, and most debilitating disease in the world, and by the year 2020, it will be the second biggest. In any given week, one-tenth of the adult population is suffering from clinical depression, and one in five people will suffer from it at some point in their lifetime. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of words in that paragraph. However, we only take very concise notes. Alrighty, so I hope that demonstrated how even though you've got a massive chunk of text, you really only want to take the absolute key points. While I was at uni, I took all of my notes on OneNote, and it was really great because you can have chapters and you can organize based on term, based on subject, and each new lecture, I would just open up a new page. 
Also another great thing about OneNote is you don't need to save anything, it auto saves and you can insert screenshots, slides um, and type notes. Pretty much every single one of my lecture notes were in dot points and that was much easier to remember and much more concise than if I wrote out full sentences. Think about each of your lecture notes being the raw materials for when you start to study for the test. You don't want to read that much, you'd ideally like it to be semi-organized and you'd also like it to be understandable. If you write down a really jargony or complex kind of word and you don't provide a definition for it, you're not going to remember it, you know, six weeks down the line when you actually have to study for it. And so keep your notes casual, write them in a way that suits you, that you know you can understand later on. I'm actually going to show you a screen share of how some examples of how I used to organize my notes and I'm just flipping through it here. I used a lot of like one, two, three, and then I'd kind of do sub points uh, with bullet points and then I do like sub sub points. And so when I came back to these notes, even if it was ages later, it was well organized and I kind of got a gist of what the lecture was about. And most days it sounds like I was able to get a one hour lecture into about a page or a page and a half of notes. And so it wasn't too much to actually have to read through. Alrighty, so I hope that helped a little bit in terms of what to do when you're at school or when you're at uni. Part two is about what to do in terms of preparing for a test. So the amount of time it takes to actually prepare and to study for the test really varies. I know um, one of my good friends who was the one who topped our year, she actually said she would go over all her notes every single week. By the end of the term, she'd already revised the material so many times up to there that she was pretty much prepared. I was not that bothered and so after I took those lecture notes, I'd leave it and I wouldn't come back to it pretty much until three weeks or a month before the test. Then I would work on compiling all of my notes together. And so the first thing with my OneNote pages, I would actually just copy and paste it all into one long Word document. And then I would take those notes and I would kind of organize structure. If there were things that I read over, I have no idea what they say. I will try and clarify it by going back to the textbook. And then hopefully I end up with a bunch of like study notes. Now, that's pretty much all I do in terms of actually writing notes. A lot of people enjoy rewriting the notes and that's how they remember it. However, it's been shown that that's not the most effective way of actually consolidating memory and information. The best way to actually prepare for a test is obviously to have some notes, but then just to do heaps and heaps of practice. I still have a couple of Facebook groups where there were places where we could upload multiple choice questions. For instance, if you got into the group, everyone would just try and study together. We organized study times, for instance, you know, this week, Wednesday, 2 to 4 p.m. at the library. I do admit it sounds rather nerdy now that I think back to it, but it's so much more interesting studying with a bunch of people. You know, you get to meet up, you get to have a bit of a chat, but you also get to help each other. And so I really recommend trying to use your notes as a basis, but then actually doing a lot of active study, like practice tests, practice essays, quizzing your friends, and that actually creates a much deeper understanding. Now, for those who find it really difficult to get started and, you know, you're just dreading the idea of sitting down for a test, totally understand you. Pomodoro timer was really useful for me. It's basically a method of timing it so that you do, I think it's 25 minutes and you get a five minute break and then another 25 minutes and a five minute break. I'm going to link some Pomodoro timers below, but essentially it's a way of doing short bursts of work because often we psych ourselves out or we lose motivation because it's too daunting. There's too much going on. But getting yourself started and saying, you know what, I'm literally just going to do 25 minutes of work, that somehow reduces the pressure. I also wanted to talk briefly about this idea of motivation. Often we beat ourselves up around exam time saying, you know, I wish I was just more motivated. I, I'm so lazy, I can't do this properly. Sometimes the best thing that you can do for yourself is actually just to take a break let your brain recharge, let it just have some time and you can come back refreshed afterwards. Alrighty, section three is about what to do on the day of the exam. And so this one is something that I don't hear too many people talk about, but I definitely had a very set routine for test day. Pro athletes, a lot of public speakers, a lot of, you know, professionals have a whole routine around when they actually go into their game day. And so I really recommend having a bit of a routine. Firstly, you're going to go and going to perform your best on the test if you're feeling your best. And so I cannot stress enough, sleep the night before your exam. I have not done a single all-nighter in my entire high school uni career, and I did fine, and so you do not need an all-nighter. Firstly, it means that you are setting yourself up in the 
worst possible way that you can because your brain is so tired it's going to be so hard slogging through a three hour paper now if you found yourself in that tight spot where you realize you really haven't done very much study up until the day or two before the exam it happens i mean obviously it's not ideal but it does happen and i'd actually recommend instead of sleeping really late and studying until 3 a.m or something and then going to bed i'd actually recommend going to bed as soon as you can, and then waking up earlier to do your study. I'd also often schedule something nice after the exam, for instance, meeting up with some friends and having lunch together, or going and treating myself to a really nice meal or something like that. So even though I say that make it an enjoyable morning, don't deviate too much from your typical. And so if you usually get up, have a smoothie, then you go to school, don't force yourself to get up, cook this full English breakfast, go for a run. If you've got a normal routine, try and stick to it as much as possible, just so your body doesn't feel like it's too out of whack. Now, when it actually comes to you've reached the race course or you've reached your class for the exam, I cannot stress enough, get out of there. Don't talk to anyone. Most of the time, I remember outside the test room, people would just be frantically like, with their test notes here, freaking out. There is no better way to make yourself really jumpy and nervy before walking into a test. I never talked to anyone before tests unless I knew they were kind of chill. Uh, usually I would do any last minute, you know, reading over notes or whatever. I would do it away from the rest of the crowd and then I would just go for a walk because there is no worse thing than to have one particular paragraph like cemented onto your mind and you remember that and then you walk into the test room and then that's all you can remember and you've just forgotten everything else. It's called the recency effect. Basically means that if you're gonna study something really deeply right before the test, it's gonna mean that you know that really well, but chances are you've kind of lost everything else. Ideally, you don't even need to read over the notes. By the time you've reached the exam center, you've done you know, 99% of the preparation that you're gonna do anyway. And so try and relax, like make it a, a nice morning. Go for a walk, put on your favorite music, admire whatever's around the race course, do whatever you have to do to just stay as calm and relaxed as possible. Make sure on the night before that you've also packed all of your test essentials. I know this is such like a practical kind of little thing, but we used to have these Ziploc clear bags and you'd have to have certain types of pencils, make sure they're sharpened, make sure you have a rubber, make sure you have fresh pens or, you know, at least you have multiple pens. There's nothing worse than getting to the middle of an essay and, you know, your pens run out of ink and you're like desperately trying to get another pen. Just make sure you're trying to reduce as many potential roadblocks as possible when it comes to test day. You're treating yourself like royalty on test day. Ideally, when you're sitting down at that test table, you've had a pretty relaxing morning. You know, you've eaten, you're well hydrated, you've gone to the toilet, you feel fully prepared with all of your supplies there, and then you can actually focus on what you need to do instead of focusing on all the other stresses that came before. So part four is organization. I'm quite into organization and so I could probably talk about this at length whether it be me organizing my clients and my current schedule how I did it back in high school we had quite a strict like high school calendar routine thing but I'm going to talk specifically about how I did it during uni first thing is actually bullet journaling and I've actually inserted a clip of my roommate Wendy who is much neater at bullet journaling and so I'm gonna insert this here basically the bullet journaling technique is you organize or you basically create a calendar around how you would like to structure it and so instead of buying a pre-bought journal you're going to create something that suits you and the things that you're doing i really like the bullet journal system where you have a master list where you basically list down everything or all the important tasks that you need and then you have special signs that indicate they're either done you've either delayed them or they're incomplete. And so if you wanted to learn more about that, there are so many different resources. I use a very, very simple technique where I literally just do a master list, transport points from that into my daily list. Uh, whereas people create these most amazing designs and they have all these creative ways to express their calendar. Do it whatever way that you like. As soon as you get your course outlines, they actually detail exactly when every single test and every single assignment is due throughout your whole term. Put it straight into a calendar. So Wendy and I, who was my best friend uh, at uni, we had something called our ninja date. It was basically like a study 
buddy system. Once a week we would both have our bullet journals out and we would talk through all the different areas that we needed to do work for, whether it be things that we want to do in terms of social life, so you know, catching up with certain friends or family, planning things. For each subject, the to-do things that we had to do, fitness, uh, we also had one on mental health. I think at the time we were also both single, so I think there was like romance or something. Just having a study buddy to keep yourselves accountable, just to talk through all the different tasks that you need to finish up. That was really, really helpful. And especially during honors year when it was basically a whole year where you set the pace and you write your own thesis at your pace. It's so helpful to have someone kind of keep you in line and to keep updated with each other. I also set up my Gmail in a way that it would star things that were important and they would actually jump to the top of my inbox. After a while, your Gmail starts building up so there's so many things each day that you lose track of the important ones. Actually, I'm not gonna try and explain this tech thing. I'm gonna link a website below that'll do it. I also use Google Keep and more recently, I've actually started using Airtable. There's a style called Kanban, which is where you have kind of columns and tasks are at different levels of completion. And so for my YouTube Airtable, I have um, ideas for YouTube videos and I have a scripting column. And once they're scripted, I have one to upload to DaVinci Resolve, which is where I edit my videos. And then after that, I have um, you know, thumbnail creation, and so I move it along each category as they're being made. I say this as if I've done this a lot, but no, I made this like two days ago, and so I'm only just starting to organize this stuff. But with Google Keep, I used to just write down all the little tasks that I had under each section, and so I'll insert a little bit of a clip now of me doing Google Keep stuff. You can do one on, you know, grocery lists that you need to purchase, on the things that you need to study for, on the assignments that are coming up in the next month. You can do one on, you know, general life stuff, like, oh, it's mom's birthday or it's father's day coming up. And so this really helped me organize my life because as soon as something come up, I'd write it into one of these little Google Keep notes. That would mean that I pretty much remember to do everything because it's kind of all outlined. Google Keep's also available on your phone. And so I can write something when I'm on the bus, but I can also access it when I'm back home and I have my computer as well. Okay, and final part, I wanted to just talk about general approach to uni and to school. I am such a big believer in making the most of things outside of study. At uni, I put a lot of energy into, you know, going on exchange overseas, on joining clubs, student life program, and I led a volunteering program, and all of those things really enriched my academic experience. Actually, when I think back to uni, my best memories are of hanging out with street team or setting up a certain event, and those things were so much more fun, I guess, and they gave life to the uni experience way more than the study part of it. And I also think when we feel enriched and fulfilled and where our social cup is full, it means that we're much more motivated when it comes to study. Another thing is it helps organize your life. And so if you feel like for the entire week you can just study anytime you like, I would just do nothing. Like I would just wait. I'd say, you know, I can do it on tomorrow, and tomorrow. But if you have things that you need to do, for instance, you need to complete it today because you know what, Tuesday and Wednesday you're volunteering for something, then it actually almost forces you to have to do work earlier in the week and actually keeps you more organized. Don't underweight the power of having social relationships and having friends help you out academically as well. And obviously, you know, that's a two-way kind of street. Helping each other is a really fun part of uni. Like you can really learn with people who are interested in the same stuff that you are, people who are probably developing in a similar line to you are. Obviously want to acknowledge my privilege here. I was financially supported by my parents during uni in that living from home, they cooked all my meals, they did my laundry, a bit embarrassed to say that, but I had it very easy in terms of the living part of life, which is why I had the privilege of, you know, doing clubs after uni and studying without needing a part-time job. I understand for a lot of people, it's not the case. It's you are going to study, uh, you're going to uni just to study and you need to you know, raise a family and you need to make income just to live. For those people, I'd just like to say like, first of all, respect to you. But second of all, 
lots of the same things still apply. It's, you know, study smart, not study hard. Even if you're incredibly busy, I still would say try and make at least one friend in a lecture. Try and take something out of uni apart from just the degree. And I think last and definitely not least, I've talked about this before, but sleep um, and balance are so important. I remember some people used to pull all-nighters like the week before their thesis was due or the week before an exam or something and maybe they would do okay in a test but there was just so much psychological pain that you'd have to heap on yourself. You'd feel tired and grumpy and nervous and worried and so try not to let uni take over your life so you know make sure you're keeping it to when I'm at uni I'm doing work maybe I can stay an hour back late if I want to do extra work and then when I actually catch that bus or I drive home that's home time, that's chill out time, you can do whatever you like then, and then that means that you're refreshed for the next day when you come back to uni. Now I do want to place a caveat here and say that I developed this study routine and this kind of mindset to study, and that's what worked for me, and they are not necessarily going to be the exact formula that is going to work for your style of learning and for your type of brain. And so it's just so important that we don't just blindly follow what other people are doing, you know? Because your classmate's studying eight hours a night, you know, I have to do that as well to keep up. That is not the case at all. Find what works for you and don't listen and don't get swept up in the exam anxiety of everyone else around you. And I think getting through high school and uni is like, it's almost as much as like walking your own path and doing your own thing, not getting swept up in all the fear that you feel, as well as, you know, obviously doing the work and finding the organization things that work for you. Alrighty, so that's pretty much everything in terms of my way of tackling study. If you wanted to actually change your habits and maybe take something away from the video, I'd recommend you pick one tip and do it consistently. And habit change is really just about making small changes and doing it over and over again. So rather than trying to completely overhaul your entire study system, just choose one thing that resonated with you and put it into your own routine. Let me know down below all of your study related questions and I'll try and get back to them. Alrighty, sun's going down. I hope you guys have a lovely day or night. Uh, wherever you are. I hope you guys are staying safe and I'll see you next time. Bye!